Hey guys, it's Amanda and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I feel like I say that in every video, um, but it is something that I've never really done before, so I think that's an accurate statement. Uh, so here I have some of my artwork from this past year. We are nearing the end of 2017 and I kind of just wanted to gather some of my old artwork and just talk about it with you guys and sort of critique myself and talk about ways that you can critique yourself when you see you know improvements and you kind of see you know changes in your art over time and how to talk about that without really getting down on yourself so that's what we're going to be doing today and if you guys haven't seen my video titled make bad art i would recommend that you guys watch that first because this is a sort of sequel sort of semi-related video to that and this is basically all just about embracing your journey embracing your process and meeting yourself where you're at in your art journey because it can be really toxic to compare yourself to other artists but it's a really good idea to compare yourself to your old artwork and see how much you've improved and then also see where you want to go from there so anyway let's just jump into it uh the first piece that i created um, in 2017, at least the first one that I still have. Some of the artwork uh, that I did this year has sold, so I don't have those to share with you. Um, but this is my Carrie Fisher piece in memory of the late Carrie Fisher and her most iconic role as Princess Leia. I did this for a comic convention, um, and it honestly didn't really sell that well. <laughs> Looking at it now, I love the face. Um, it doesn't really resemble Carrie Fisher that much, although I do think with the buns it does look like her. Um, but the likeness to Carrie Fisher isn't really there. Uh, the shoulders and the pose are very boxy. The lower half of the body is actually okay, and I like the way that that was painted as well, because this is all done in watercolor. Um, but the upper half of the body is leaving something to be desired for me and I feel like the shoulders shouldn't be so front facing, there should be more of an angle to kind of line up with the rest of the body. Um, and the hands, not that great, uh, and the wings are a bit off to me and that is a little bit distracting. So while I do like this piece and I love, I love the color scheme, I love the colors in the background and how soft they look and I don't know if you can tell but there is also some pearlescent watercolor kind of throughout the background that's really very pretty and very fitting for this piece. So there are definitely things that I like about this piece and when you're critiquing your own artwork and as you will see me do throughout the video, I'm going to be pointing out things that I do like as well as things that I don't like and that's a really really important component to critiquing yourself and critiquing anybody else. You kind of want to do the sandwich method where you have a compliment, a criticism, and then ending with another compliment. And in this case I like the face i think it's really good however i don't really think it's fitting and i think the anatomy is a bit off but overall i really like the color scheme there's your little constructive criticism sandwich next i have my meet the artist tag <laughs> i need to redo this i've been wanting to redo this actually so i think i'll redo it for 2018. um i feel like the body that I drew for the character that was supposed to be me is just way too long and lanky. Like I have a long torso, but not this long. Um, and the face is a bit awkward. I feel like this year I've really been challenged with drawing faces um, and I'm trying to get better about it, but they kind of end up looking like frog-like uh, more than they look like humans. I don't know. Um, but this was fun and it wasn't meant to obviously be like this super detailed, beautiful illustration. But I do feel like I could have done a better job than I did with this and I definitely want to redo it. Um, although I like the colors and I like the little details that I added, but I, I do want to redo this overall um, and just do something a little bit different. This piece is of my original characters, Helios and Volana. I really like the composition. I like that we have these two characters in the center and there's sort of this halo glow um, behind them. I really like that. Um, I feel like Volana's face is a little bit awkward. She kind of has a large forehead here, uh, which is not what I wanted. And the facial proportions and kind of where the features are laid out are a bit awkward. Um, like I feel like if this was digital art and I flipped the image, it wouldn't exactly look that accurate. 
Uh, and the biggest criticism for me that I see here are the arms and the hands. They're awkward, they don't really make sense, they kind of just look like very stiff doll arms that, that don't really function. Um, and I, I do need to improve that especially, and, and I feel like the hands are small, they look very small to me here. Um, but the final thing that I do really like is the way that Volana's dress turned out. I feel like the shading on there as well as the little accents that I added with the white gel pen look really, really cool. And that really kind of grounds this piece for me. I feel like it goes well and it complements with the yellow, um, but it, it's also different enough from the dark background that it just kind of stands out on its own. So I do think that that's really pretty. Next we have my Spider Gwen piece. And this is the what I mean when I say that some of my drawings have been getting this like frog face. Um, her eyes are way too far apart and they just don't really fit on the face that I had sort of sketched out and I need to get better about doing like facial perspectives anyway, but this just wasn't a very proud moment for me and it's the biggest drawback of this piece in general in my opinion just because the face is obviously the thing that you're kind of drawn towards and it's not that good. <laughs> I do love the color scheme though. I love this purple and blue color scheme and this was one of the first instances of me realizing how effective blues and purples are at shading and I really went with that and, and carried that on through a lot of my artwork in 2017. Um, I do feel like the background is a little bit, I don't know, <laughs> not that great. I like the brick. I like this part. The perspective down here is a little bit off So that's kind of distracting, but this part was just rushed and especially the part with like these Like rays of light beaming out. They're weird um, And that's a little off-putting to me. I kind of wish that those weren't as Prevalent in the piece or that I don't know if I if I redid it. I would rework this in a different way um, but I do feel like the composition is interesting. I like having the character very much in the foreground and then having this depth of field of stuff that's in the background. So I like that about it. I can see what I was going for, but I definitely want to do a better job of that in the future. And um, perspective is one of the biggest things that I want to improve on in 2018. So I like this piece. My favorite part about this piece is uh, Barb's hair. This is a Babs and, and Dick from the DC Universe, aka Batgirl and Nightwing. Babs' hair is like my favorite. I think it's it's so smooth and it has that texture and there's not a lot of lines in this piece. And this was another instance of me kind of challenging my style to really be less reliant on line work and really just more reliant on colors and textures. Um, I do feel like, again, the arms are awkward, uh, especially like the shoulder area. It just doesn't really make sense. Um, and I feel like the hands are small and I don't know, just that's not how arms work, you know? And uh, Dick Grayson has a little bit of a frog face with his, his eyes kind of being a little far apart. But I do like this piece and I feel like um, the coloring is really strong here. This is one of my favorites, actually. I love the colors in this piece. This is actually from a referenced image, um, and I think that's partly why the colors work worked so well, and as well as, like, I don't know, just I feel like everything kind of came together better because of the reference picture. So I love the background. I love the colors because they're very simple colors, and I love that I did a darker skin tone because I need to do more of that, and this was really an instance of me challenging myself to do that. Um, the biggest drawback of this piece is the facial anatomy uh, and kind of how her nose and mouth are really off center in such a way that it's not at all accurate or realistic. So that is something that I would want to do better about, even if it's stylized like this, where it is kind of less semi-realistic and more just kind of cartoony. I would want it to be accurate. And this has the stylization but not really the accuracy. Um, but one thing I do really love is the hair because again it's very lineless um, and it just kind of has this implied texture to it that looks really really cool. So I want to kind of go back to this part of my style where I have um, a very lineless element like hair and then other uh, areas of the piece have lines that you know just need a little bit of structure like in this case her shirt has lines. Um, but the hair doesn't, and I feel like it contrasts so well. So yeah, I like this. I like this piece a lot. This was my draw with makeup challenge. Um, I do this pose a lot. 
I need to stop doing this pose. This pose is getting old, it's getting boring. It might be kind of reflective because it's in a cellophane bag so that the makeup doesn't smudge. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I like the colors. Again, the colors are simple and I like that. Um, obviously I couldn't do much with like the shading here so I'm not really gonna uh, nag on myself too much for that because obviously the medium was a little bit limiting here. And I'm proud of what I was able to accomplish with this medium and I think that I, I used my colors well and I used the space well. Um, and, and the lines that I created were really cool. But yeah, the pose is awkward and the hand Again, it's it's a it's a, an easy hand that I do a lot that doesn't look great, um, and I need to get better about referencing hands and especially like arms and shoulders too. I just feel like they don't ever fall quite right. Um, but yeah, this one this one was a good challenge for me. Um, this is my Zelda piece. I like this one a lot. I like the color scheme. I think that I really did a good job of kind of making Copics look almost like watercolors, which I'm really proud of. However, Zelda has a major frog face and it's just, it's the part I like least about this piece. It's not my style. It doesn't work when I try and do it. And it's just the eyes are not only too far down on the face, but they're like too far apart. And it just, it doesn't look good. Um, but I did challenge myself in this piece to do like a water texture and I like the way it came out. Um, there's a lot of different textures at play here between the water, the fabric, the grass, uh, the trees, and then like these light uh, orbs in the background which I think all come together really really nicely and, and complement each other well. But the focal point of the piece, which is the face, just doesn't do anything. Um, it's, it leaves a lot to be desired for me. So um, there's a, I like about 90% of this piece, and I, the only part I don't like is the face. So um, that is something I need to, to improve on. And part of this just comes with not rushing to the coloring phase if I'm not 100% happy with the sketch. And I do that a lot. So if you are like me and you find yourself kind of rushing to the end phase, um, it can be really helpful even just to take like 20 minutes, walk away from your desk, walk around, stretch, get something to eat, something to drink, come back and look at your sketch and see if you still like it enough to finish it um, and at that point if you're not happy with it rework it and then color it and I feel like that would make a big difference in a lot of my artwork. Um, these two pieces I'll kind of talk about hand in hand because they're very similar color schemes and this was one instance of me really challenging a more limited color scheme um, and I've been working a lot with like pinks and oranges and purples as sort of a cohesive color scheme. And this was another instance where I realized how shading with color is just so much more effective. So at this point in the year, I was really kind of surrendering my gray markers uh, in favor of purples and blues. And I think that's been one of the biggest things that I've learned this year and one of the biggest improvements in my artwork has come from that. So I like these. Um, both of them need some anatomy improvement and they need, you know, some some work there. I feel like the face in this piece is pretty good. It's a little awkward in this piece as well as like the shoulders are, are really weird in this piece. Um, yeah, so but but overall I do like these. I, I know what I could improve on um, but I do feel like I challenge myself, you know. I feel like it doesn't turn out great when you first challenge yourself to do something you're not used to but it's a step in the right direction nonetheless and I do like that these have well thought out backgrounds. So I like that a lot. This was a fun piece that I actually like a lot. I think the anatomy is great. I think the colors are great. Um, and the composition is well thought out and it really, really works. I feel like this is actually one of my strongest pieces. Um, again, it's not very reliant on lines. So my coloring has to be really strong and really clean. And I think that it is. Um, yeah, I like this piece. I'm really, really proud of it. This is my Native Mermaid piece. You can see there's some fun kind of gold accents. I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, there you go. If I tilt it more towards the light, you can see all the fun gold bits, which are really cool. Um, I feel like, to me, it seems kind of flat. That's my biggest complaint. Um, I 
feel like, yeah, the orange and the tail and on the mermaid contrast well with the blue in the background, but they're all just very light, flat colors. And I feel like if you were to uh, convert this to like a black and white image, everything would kind of be the same value. And that's probably what's not doing this piece any justice. I need more darks. I need more contrast. Um, and I feel like the pose is just a little bit stiff and and flat. I, I can see what I was doing and I feel like I challenged myself, but I needed a stronger reference picture to really get uh, the accuracy and the movement in that pose. Um, but I like this and, you know, I think it was a step in the right direction, but to me it just appears, you know, a little flat and a little boring and it needs more dimension to really bring it to life. This is my Wonder Woman piece. Um, because I loved the Wonder Woman movie. This also has some fun uh, gold accents on it. Um, so I love the background colors. I think that the background colors look really, really cool. Again, I think that blue at the top could have been a little bit darker and more desaturated to, uh, I don't know, make it a little bit more intense. Um, and I like the outfit, but the pose is very stiff for me and the face is really off. The face is the part that I've, I am most disappointed about in this piece, um, especially because I, I was pretty proud of everything else. It, it, everything could have been improved a little bit more, um, but the face is, the, the features are way too low on the face. It makes her have no chin. Um, I feel like she could have used a more intense facial expression, um, a more intense action-y pose to really bring it to life. Um, but something I do really like about it is this sort of lighting effect that I created. You can especially kind of see it down at the leg. I feel like that's really strong, really effective, and that adds a lot of depth and dimension. Um, but yeah, her, her body pose and, and facial expression don't really match the idea that I had in mind. And that's the weakest part of this piece. I would love to redraw this though and, and give it another go because I think I could do a much better job. So this piece did pretty well on social media and the video. A lot of you guys seem to like this. It's a very lineless style, which I think um, I was really getting more comfortable with at this point. So the hair is really loose and really fun. Even the flowers don't have very much definition um, and that gives them a very cool look. Uh, so I do like this and, and it's fun. And, and this is sort of a style that I went back to several times throughout 2017 when I just wanted to do something fast and easy. I think I kind of got a little burnt out on it for a while and felt like it wasn't coming out as good as I thought it could, um, but I'm, I'm still kind of continuing to perfect this style. And there are parts that I like about it and parts that I think I could do without. So yeah, I'm gonna continue to push and explore this style a lot more. All right, I'm gonna try and pick up the pace a little bit more because this is gonna be a long video. This is my LGBT pride piece. It's done in like watercolor and colored pencil. I like the idea. I feel like the idea came together so, so, so well. The background, a little bit rushed. That could have been thought out better. And the only thing that I think is really off is that the rings are on the wrong hands. Um, if we're talking like marriage, the wedding ring goes on the left hand. I feel like that, yeah, that's the only thing that's off. Um, but I like the pose. I feel like the, the weakest part of the pose in this instance would be both of the lower halves of the bodies but i feel like the upper halves are pretty good and i'm i'm happy with those and again i saw an idea in my head and then i got it down on paper and i'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it looks overall this was part of the art extravaganza um collaboration this summer and this was a challenge i did with jmi so this is one of his characters as a drag queen um my favorite part of this piece aside from the character being a super, super fun uh, character to draw and costume to design, I really like the background. I would love to do more backgrounds like this because I feel like the background was really, really effective and looks really cool. It wasn't detailed, it wasn't complicated, but it really works in this case and I wanna do more stuff like that. So, and I, I also like the composition of the background being like, you know cut off and then the character even kind of extending beyond the background i like that i think it's a really cool 
composition decision and, it, and it's effective and it really kind of draws you in. I really like the background in this piece. This was my one marker challenge um, and I was exploring a lot of inking techniques with this to try and get more dimension because I got a very, very light color for this challenge. Um, and I like this. I think it's I think it's good. Um, I actually really like the facial expression and I think the facial anatomy is pretty good. Um, as are the hands. I feel like the hands are still like that very easy go-to hand pose that I do, but for some reason these look better. Maybe it's the shading, maybe I just, you know, had a good day, um, but I do really like this and I think that the pose is better and the facial, facial expression is also better. Again, I'm going to talk about these two kind of side by side because they are obviously part of the same uh, little pairing. So this is my Game of Thrones piece of Jon Snow and Daenerys. Um, Jon Snow has major frog face and Daenerys does a little bit. I feel like her eye is just a little bit too close to the bridge of her nose and it needs to be pushed back a little bit further. But I love the color schemes here. Again, I really shied away from using grays and I really tried to shade with blues and purples and that really brings the color schemes together. And I don't know, I like the textures that I was able to create and the emotion, like I feel like the facial expressions are good, but Jon Snow's face is like just frogish. I don't know, it's just, it's not my favorite, so. I wish I could go back and redo that. Uh, this is my summer redraw piece. Really like the background. Um, I feel like I needed to do a better job of tying the character into the background. She looks kind of like she's just floating there. The dog, I don't even want to talk about. Not good at drawing dogs. Her feet, I need to get better at drawing feet because those don't really work. Um, but I don't draw full body poses a lot so I can see how this was a challenge for me um, and how this you know, might have just been, you know, something that I, I was doing for the first time and need to improve on from here on out. Um, but, you know, I, I like it. I think it's a good piece, but I feel like the colors in the foreground don't really complement the colors in the background very well. But I do like the background a lot. This piece is really fun. It's one of my favorites. Um, I love the line work. I feel like the anatomy is actually really, really good. The hand's a little awkward and could be better, but aside from that, I actually really, really like this. Um, her head's a little bit big, but that's almost more of like a stylistic choice because I was doing these pin-up proportions and I wanted to kind of exaggerate certain parts of her proportions, so I feel like that works really well. This piece was also part of our extravaganza, and this was me redrawing one of Nyrell's pieces. I like the pose. I feel like the pose was a good challenge for me. It doesn't look stiff um, and it doesn't look like too front facing. So I, I, I like kind of the movement with that. The face isn't that strong, however, and I feel like the face could be a lot better. So yeah, I don't know, but, but overall I do like this as well. And I think that the lighting is really cool too. All right, my Spider-Man piece. I love this um, primary color scheme of the red, the blue, and the yellow. It looks so, so cool, and it's a really strong color combination, especially for characters like this. And I wanna keep doing more pieces in this color scheme because I think they're really, really cool. As you guys might already know, the biggest drawback for me in this piece is that he has sort of a frog face. His eyes are too far apart. They're kind of off kilter. The mouth is a little bit weird. I can see what I was going for, but it's just not executed perfectly. And I needed to kind of just take a minute to adjust a couple of things and it would have turned out much, much stronger. Um, and that's really the only drawback that I have because everything else I really like about this piece. And this is me kind of going back to exploring line work a little bit more and, and incorporating that back into my artwork a little bit and this is still something I go back and forth with whether I like my art to have really strong bold lines or really soft lines and I, th I think it's just you know two two sides of the same coin they're both my style I just have different ways of executing um, different pieces this is a watercolor piece of Zozobra you can go watch the video to kind of find out more about this character and the story and everything like that um, I like this. I think the composition is good. I feel like the colors are good and it's a really simple fun watercolor illustration and the colors work well together. So I like this. Um, my complimentary color challenge. I really like this piece. I think the facial anatomy is good. I like even the arm I think actually looks pretty good and I'm happy with, with what I was able to achieve. So I like this and again I think that the colors work really well together and I don't feel like this is a super flat image like there's clear value and distinction in, in where the lights and the darks are so I like that a lot. 
Um, my Stevani piece, I like the colors. I feel like there could have been a little bit more depth and I could have pushed the shadows a little bit. But I like this, and this is again kind of me going back to that lineless style, and I feel like here it was really, really effective, being that the color palette was pretty um, limited and also pretty soft, and it also just fits more with like the style of Steven Universe and the show, um, so I like this. These are my two Oahu marker uh, pieces that I uh, did. One of these was for our review, and then the other one was just kind of to create the partner piece. I really like these. Again, the limited color scheme. I like the gold accents. And I like the posing. I feel like the facial anatomy on this one is better than this one. This one, again, I tried to do like this three quarter view and it just didn't work out that well. A little frog face. But I, I like it. I feel like, yeah, maybe his shoulders could have been better. Her like torso looks better than her face and his face looks better than his torso. Um, but I do like these. This is one of my favorite pieces from this year so far. This is the scribble challenge I did with Alexi Brewer and Jennifer Charlie. I love the lines. I love the colors. I love the expression. I love the pose. I feel like everything in this piece is stronger and better than what I've been doing thus far this year. I feel like I did a good job challenging myself. This was a touch and go piece for a little while. I didn't think it was going to turn out that great, but in the end I salvaged it and actually I'm really happy with it. The only thing is that the watercolor in this piece is a little bit chalky and that's really just more the type of watercolor that I was using. I was using the Reeves watercolors. They get a little weird, they get a little chalky, but yeah, I like this piece. I like the, the contrast and everything about it. These are my Halloween illustrations. Let me kind of go ahead and spread these out here for you so you can kind of see them all side by side. These are all kind of supposed to be part of the same little trio um, for the three spooky Halloween makeup looks that I did. And I kind of feel like it goes from like, good to a little less good to a little less good. <laughs> this one I clearly kind of went all out and I feel like the facial expression and the details are all there and they all look really good. This one, the facial expression is, is phenomenal. I think that I did a good job of making it look kind of creepy and weird, um, but everything else looks kind of flat and boring. And then this one, the pose is boring, um, the coloring is kind of boring and it's just just, just a little bit more boring. Um, not to be down on myself, because I, I think that I was rushed for, for time making these, and I definitely did what I could with the time that I had. Um, I like the hair in all three of these pieces, though. I think that it looks good. I, I think especially this one. This one's my favorite, probably second favorite, and then third favorite. Um, but yeah, I don't know. To me, it's like, I tried really hard. I tried a little less hard, and then I was like, I tried, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah, I don't know. These these were fun though, and I like them, but um, they're, they could have been better, obviously. If I had more time, I probably would have done a better job. Here's my fall fairy piece, which was also kind of for Halloween. You can see the little sparkly details there. Um, I like this one. Again, she does kind of have frog face though, and I also feel like the lines on the face are too strong and they don't match up with the rest of the piece. Like the lines on the face are really bold um, and everything else is really, really soft. So that's my biggest drawback with this piece. And then we have this one, which is my most recent illustration at the time that I'm filming this video. And I'm actually incredibly proud of this piece. And I feel like this is a good place to end in this video talking about this piece because I had mentioned in a recent vlog that I'd kind of been in this like art funk because you know, I feel like YouTube cares more about my product reviews than it does about my actual art content. Um, and people, you know, my art videos don't generally do that well. And this one, the video is no exception, but the comments that I got on that video and the comments that I got on the Instagram post featuring this illustration were amazing. I think you guys saw that I was pushing myself. I think you guys saw that I was trying to improve and I was, you know, pushing myself out of my comfort zone and, and it worked. In this case, it, it really worked because um, the, the whole piece came together to tell like a snippet of a story, you know, of this girl waking up on a cold fall morning and enjoying her coffee, sitting by her window, looking out at these, you know, bright, colorful trees and leaves. It works because it tells you this story without having to have much context. And I, I pushed myself by using a lot of um, 
warm colors and cool colors so I use like a lot of oranges obviously for the outside um, and then I tried to make the inside look colder um, by using these blues so that this was really the main focus I think I did a good job and you know I think obviously there's still things that can be improved I think the perspective is probably the first thing especially like with the window um, and the lines with the in the window um, but I'm getting better and this to me is a true telltale sign that I am getting better and also I used just Windsor and Newton watercolors in this piece and it feels so much nicer parts of it still feel a little chalky and weird but not as bad as the Reeves watercolors so for me that's a huge plus um, so yeah I don't know this is a good piece to end on for me and again I kind of just want to show you where I started in 2017 compared to where I ended I feel like I can see improvements um, and it's interesting that these are both watercolor I feel like I got more confident working with watercolor more confident shading in watercolor and more confident just creating an environment for the character to live in in the piece so yeah I don't know I know this has been a super long video and I thank you guys so much for bearing with me um, talking through it because I feel like going back on your old art is the best thing that you can do to gain motivation because you know you look at your most recent piece maybe and you're not that proud of it but when you go back and see how far you've come it gives you that push that you need to keep going so never throw away your old artwork seriously it's it's so important to hold on to it for times like this when you're feeling art block or you're just not really feeling motivated because um, you can see just how much like you improve and I mean compare these two like the poses are really really similar that's actually funny I didn't realize that until I thought about it just now this is what I was capable of at the time and this is what I'm capable of now and that means a lot I'm proud of myself and, and thank you guys to everybody who's supported me so far in 2017 it's been a really cool year and this is actually uh, the day that you're watching this is the day before the one year anniversary of me hitting 1,000 subscribers on YouTube and in that year I've improved a lot but it's also a time for me to remember how thankful I am for all of you guys and how much I appreciate the support and the love that you guys give me um, anyway I'm getting sappy so I'm gonna go ahead and go thank you so much for watching uh, hopefully you didn't starve watching this video I know it was a long one and I'm sorry um, but I will see you guys Friday with an artsy fartsy Friday video for the week bye guys